It's thought to be the largest rebellion in the U.S. by people who are enslaved, but it's absent from many history books. And tonight, Sabrina Wilson explores what happened in her special report, Freedom Fight Upriver. Along the Mississippi River, a winding road, its curvature aligned with the levee. Centuries-old estates, abundant in the river parishes, trees serve as canopies. Currently nine plantations along the Mississippi River. Where people viewed as property themselves toiled in sugarcane fields. Greed kills conscience. Vast grounds upriver from New Orleans, part of a bitter history. It was a brutal system. In this area, once called the German Coast, a house on ample acreage, a place where the unexpected unfolded. In an act of desperation, slaves did desperate things. It was January 8th, 1811. Starting at Andre Plantation along the mighty Mississippi River. Located in what is present-day Laplace and St. John Parish on the east bank of the river, Woodland Plantation, owned by Colonel Manuel Andre. Miles away at Destrehan Plantation in St. Charles Parish. This is a display done by the same artist who did the other artwork, uh, Lorraine Gendron, she's local. Art envisions what it looked like as the slaves planning turned into action. Even families would come into um, the revolt. An uprising led by Charles Delon, himself a slave. Went into Manuel Andre's house and were trying to get guns and militia outfits. And when they go into the house, they see both the Man uh, Manuel Andre and his son Gilbert there. A January 16, 1811 article in the Constitutionalist newspaper says a rising of the blacks on the plantation near German coast was lately made and threatened melancholy consequences. They first attempted to assassinate Mr. Andre, a Frenchman and father-in-law to Governor Claiborne and succeeded in wounding him. His son had just been murdered by them. A rebellion thought to be inspired by a successful revolt in Haiti, an island 1,500 miles away. Do you buy into that argument? Yeah, because some of the slaves who came here came here after the rebellion. I mean, the Haitians won. From Woodland Plantation, the rebels trekked east and others joined in. Gabrielle Sharon is Destrehan Plantation's curator. There are 200 enslaved people here around that time, and it's only 17 who actually joined. Still, estimates of all who revolted range from 200 to over 500. It is the largest one we have ever seen in the U.S. history. In this former overseer's cabin, modern visuals. Escaped runaway slaves as well as Native Americans. There are women who participated. Uh, you'll see that some of the houses were burned along the way. Uh, you'll see they carried banners that they made. Um, they had drums that they used to communicate um, during the walk. To New Orleans. Their goal was to get to New Orleans, demand to see Governor Claiborne, and demand that he give them their freedom. In fact, um, one of the chants that they uh, repeated along the way was on to New Orleans. It said the rebels wanted to establish a free republic there. UNO history professor emeritus Dr. Rafael Casimir adds. Some of the slaves are trying to get back to Haiti. My oldest American ancestors came from Haiti. Determined, but not unchallenged. Two days into the revolt, they encountered troops at Forche Plantation near present-day Rivertown and Kenner in Jefferson Parish. They did not make it to New Orleans. They do not. Still, there were so many families that not everybody is caught. The Constitutionalist, using words from that era, said, with great exertions about 80 whites were immediately collected and marched against the brigands, who were defeated and driven into the woods with much loss. Other detachments were soon put in pursuit of the fugitives, many of them killed. These are the names of the plantation owners. Here's Mr. Destrehan. And these are the names of the enslaved from this plantation who participated in the rebellion. Among the captured, some from Destrehan Plantation. There were two men and a woman. 
They were among the 60 some who were captured and brought back here and later charged with insurrection and put on trial. Handwritten court documents from the territory of Orleans, as it was called in English and some in French, provide insight. Jessamine, the slave of Noel Desterhan, sentenced him to death. Another references Theodore the slave, the name Jacob, among words in French. Some face trial at Destrahan Plantation. So they were in the front of the house. Usually they were in the front uh, gardens. They would have five to six judges. Transcripts preserved. Today, the 16th of January in the year of our Lord, 1811, and the 35th of American Independence at the general headquarters of the plantation of Mr. Destrahan. Now this is a laundry room built in 1826. It's similar to the one where 22 of the slaves who were revolted were held until they went on trial. Their names were Charles, Harry, Lewis, Mingo. In all, Sharon says 29 were tried here. I'm actually standing mm -hmm. where some of the trials took place. Yes. So exactly where you're standing is actually probably where the trial benches would have been for the judges. But none of Destrahan's slaves went on trial here. Destrahan did not want them tried here. These three would have been put on trial, not here, but in, um, in the Cabildo. Located in New Orleans French Quarter. They were found guilty and hanged in what is now Jackson Square. On the river's west bank at Whitney Plantation. This is just a way to show the barbarism of the, of the masters. A memorial. Slaves who were captured, decapitated, the heads were placed on pikes along the river. Because slaves were considered an investment, the legislature for the territory of Orleans passed an act saying that for each and every slave killed and executed on account of the late insurrection in this territory, there shall be paid the sum of $300. Dr. Ibrahima Sek, Whitney Plantation's research director. The economy was rooted into slavery. Centuries later, historical markers. 1811 Slave of All Trail takes you down that journey. A surprise for many. No, most of them are completely flabbergasted because they walk into the exhibit and ask, how did I never know about this? Why do you think so many people are still in the dark about the 1811 slave revolt? The slaves didn't write history. In 1994, the Orleans Parish School Board proclaimed that the story of Charles Delon's revolt and his sacrifice and the sacrifices of his brave men become a part of the school district's African-American curriculum. The accepted version of history, of course, didn't talk about slave rebellions. November 2019, a two-day reenactment of the revolt, a project by visual artist Dred Scott. All the suffering and uh, always bear in mind that this, the story of the ancestor was a, uh, a true story of glory. Because they persevered. Despite of all the mistreatments, the, the, the hard work, my grandmother was the daughter of a slave. She was born in 1872. Very, very proud Creole woman. Passed on to us this notion that you're somebody. I mean, you came from slave ancestors. You're somebody. They were slaves, they couldn't do anything about it. Along this river, some tried. I'm Sabrina Wilson, Fox 8, Local First. Dr. Casimir says newspapers in some northern states reported on the 1811 slave revolt before publications closer to home. The former Woodland Plantation, where the revolt was launched in 1811, was recently purchased by the Descendants Project, a nonprofit led by African Americans. Such a great and informative story right there. Really is. Great job by Sabrina in that one.